so we're back again at the 4-H Capital Program, and Sarah is going to talk to us about all of these beautiful uh, study skins or animal pelts and uh, skulls that we've got here on this table. Um, so you're going to do a lesson for us, I guess? Yeah, so I'll take these out. Um, you can do a, like an hour or so lesson with them. I usually take them to open houses, and so kids can come. We'll talk about them a little bit, and they can leave whenever they want. Um, but yeah, so this is... What, well, which pelt do you think this is? <laughs> well, I know, but okay. um, what do most people normally say? So most people, so it's this long, um, so most people say a fox, and it's not a fox because foxes are smaller, mm -hmm. and they'll guess a wolf, um, but <laughs> it has this nice fluffy tail, and wolf's tails are smaller, more like a dog's than a cat's tail. So this is a coyote, mm -hmm. um, and what do you think the coyote eat with this teeth? <laughs> well, they've got nice big sharp teeth, mm -hmm. uh, including sharp molars, just like my dog or my cat, so it's probably a carnivore which eats meat. It is indeed and I'll also talk about um, the canine teeth here it's going to be like ripping into them mm -hmm. and if you want to pass me that school there what do you think that this guy eats with these like chewing teeth? Mm -hmm. So it's got molars that are a little bit flatter and better for grinding and it doesn't even have any canine teeth so this probably eats plants and it doesn't rip into meat. Exactly so this is what we call an herbivore, herbivore when they only eat um, plants and grass and leaves and stuff. What do you think you are? <laughs> um, so we are omnivores, right? Because yeah. we have a teeth that are good for biting into meat and also molars that are good for grinding up plant material. Um, so omnivore means that we can eat maybe not anything we want, but most things. <laughs> Almost, yeah. Don't put those back or down, whatever. Um, some of the other guys we have here will eat almost anything. Mm -hmm. Like this guy, this one's missing our bottom jaw. Um, but he comes along with this pelt. So this is... One of the guys that will eat almost anything. What do you think he is with this wow. tail? <laughs> it's got that nice stripy tail, and there's a black mask on the face, so it looks an awful lot like a raccoon. It is indeed. And so we're missing the bottom jaw for this one. Um, but he will dig in your trash can and eat almost anything. Um, one that's a lot harder for people to guess <laughs> is it's not like relative, but yeah. same concept of we'll get into your trash can. comes out at night, so it means it's nocturnal. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think this one is? Um, well, it's got the, well, they don't necessarily look super cute when they're grown-ups, but I That's love true. them when they're babies. Um, it's an opossum. Yeah. A Virginia opossum. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's an opossum. <laughs> um, and as you can see, they've got the big canine teeth, some grinding teeth, um, but more of meat. I remember when I was a little kid, um, my grandfather would do, like, live traps to get, to, like, save the garden. Yeah. I always wanted to pet them because <laughs> they bare their teeth when they're angry or when they're Scared, so mm -hmm. it looks like they're smiling. Who's smiling at me? Don't yeah. let me pet them. One animal that I could pet as a child, though, is this guy. Um, so um, these, my hints to guessing this pelt is they live in underground homes called Warrens. They'll leave, they'll raise their kids called kittens. They live in a group called a fluffle. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so a group of these animals called a fluffle. But what do you think this so one is? so soft. I know yeah. you guys can't feel it, but it's so soft. It's a bunny. It is. It's a bunny. So bunnies and rabbits are the same animal. Hairs are different. Hairs are bigger and gamier. Um, how long do you think a rabbit lives in the wild? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm going to say, like, maybe three years, because I know that opossums are, like, super short-lived at two, so mm -hmm. maybe a little bit longer on the rabbit. It's actually a little bit shorter. It's is one it? to two years wow. um, because of predators, because they're bottom on the food chain. Yeah. Um, that's also why they'll live in underground homes called warrens to try to hide more. And then how long do you think they live in captivity, like as a pet? <laughs> yeah, uh, they can live quite a bit longer because there isn't a threat of predators. Yeah. I don't know the actual years, though. Yeah, it's like 10 to 12, so a lot longer in um, captivity. So part of our animal science is um, raising rabbits. And so we'll have two schools this spring that will get rabbits for show. Um, one will show like each individual rabbit, and then one show will be three rabbits all together and they have to be identical or as identical as possible. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, <laughs> we'll get those in April. Wow. So yeah, this is our rabbit. Um, we've got a couple more pelts here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what do you think of this guy? I mean, it's kind of obvious. Yeah, that the white stripe on black means you should probably step away. <laughs> probably. Um, so there's also a couple different other skunks. So obviously it's the striped skunk. Mm -hmm. We also have a spotted skunk spotted skunk skull in the back that's a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so when a lot of the students are also afraid to touch this one, really? um, <laughs> but they're like skunk spray glands are not part of the pelt. Nope. Um, and so it's perfectly fine 
to touch. Mm -hmm. They'll also stand on their heads and then lift up their tail to spray you. Mm -hmm. um, so the young ones, when they're like babies, they can't spray yet. That gland hasn't matured yet. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll still stand on their heads to practice. Yep. Um, they also only spray you when they feel endangered um, or when you they think you're going to attack them. So if you see one out in the wild, just don't go near it. Should be fine. Probably. And this, I mean, this doesn't really smell yeah. bad because yeah, there aren't any scent glands anymore. So there aren't. We've pelt. also had them for a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. But. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the pelt isn't anything to worry about, and this is mm -hmm. a great way to encounter this animal without having to worry about getting sprayed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So this next one is honestly one of my favorite ones. Um, Why is it your bigger? favorite? This one I think is the softest. Um, also, how does the um, pelt feel to you? Does it feel a little oily? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Very so, smooth. For sure. Yeah. Um, so this guy will live near the water. So they're not in the water, um, but their homes will be made there. So they're always wet. And so their felt has to be a little bit oily. Um, to help get the water off so they don't freeze to death. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think this guy is? Well, it's awfully big, and it mm -hmm. lives near the water, so it's got to be a beaver, because muskrats and mink and things are a lot smaller than this. That's true. A lot of people guess bears, oh. and bears are a lot bigger. Yeah, um, <laughs> quite a bit. A bear pelt would have trouble fitting on this table. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very heavy, and yeah. also probably a lot coarser. Mm -hmm. um, this is our beaver skull. Um, what do you think beavers do with these giant teeth here? <laughs> well, they chew on wood. They do. Yeah. Um, so they'll chop down trees and with these big teeth, and then they'll have a paddle-like tail that's not part of our pelt mm -hmm. um, to then drag their tree um, and mud over a river and build dams. A um, few more here we have. So we don't have any um, bird pelts or skeletons or anything. We have a couple of bird beaks. Um, I think I said this before, but all of our... Um, Skulls are reproductions and all the pelts are real, mm -hmm. um, but this is what a, this bird's um, skull would look like. <laughs> um, what do you think this looks like to you? Well, it's awfully brightly colored and it seems familiar from like maybe a cereal box. Um, <laughs> so it's probably a toucan, right? It is. So this is the toucan and so their beak is actually part of their skull and it naturally is this rainbow color. But it's like so much more beak than it is skull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. It is really crazy. Um, some of the kids will have trouble guessing it. Um, we'll put them up to their faces. <laughs> their beak. Um, which I think it's funny. And the kind of the point of Felton Skulls is to be comfortable touching things um, and knowing that you can do hands-on science. Traditional museums, you can't touch anything. You can't go near the walls. Um, but with hands-on, you obviously can. Yeah. Um, and there's plenty of these animals around now. The beaver was almost um, hunted to extinction for like for coats and hats and such mm -hmm. um, until laws were passed to protect them. Um, but otherwise, rabbits, the gestation period of a rabbit is like 28 days or something yeah, like that. So, fast. <laughs> so you'll have more rabbits. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, our last, our last one, We've done them all. So. Yeah, last one is this guy. Um, so. They're all in two parts, mm -hmm. so some of the kids will try to hold it like this and be like, it's a pelican. I'm like, well, it's like this. Um, this bird will eat crustaceans, um, specifically shrimp, mm -hmm. and that's how they get their pink colors. So if they were to eat only blueberries, then they would turn blue because their feathers are based on what they eat. <laughs> um, what do you think this guy is? Well, you tell me it only eats shrimp, and it's got this funny, like, down-curving beak, so, and the pink was a dead giveaway. It's got to be a flamingo. It is. It is a flamingo. Indeed. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So we also have lots of books on these in the back. Um, so we'll also show pictures to the students that way, especially our um, English as a second language students. Um, it's a lot easier. Unfortunately, I don't speak Spanish, but if they're like, ah, then you can point to the pictures in the book. Yeah. Um, so reading's also always helpful, and having books on hand for students, always a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, like you said, you take these to um, open houses and things. So, mm -hmm. like, what is the main takeaway that you want the students and maybe even their families as well to sort of get from interacting with all of these study specimens? Yeah. So, I think my main takeaway that I want students to know is that they don't have to be afraid of animals. They don't have to be afraid of touching things. Um, you should not go up to a live coyote <laughs> and pet them. Um, but if something's on the table with someone, they shouldn't be afraid to touch it. If someone's like, hey, pet the snake, you shouldn't be afraid to do that. Um, and so my main, what I want students to take away is that they're able to do this and they can study it. Um, 
And then our main like talking points is like carnivore, omnivore, and herbivore. Mm -hmm. So if they can repeat those words later down the road, um, that would be amazing. I won't be there later down the road since I go to um, almost all the schools we serve. I won't be there to know if that happens. <laughs> um, but yes, that's our main takeaways with um, this class. Um, other teachers also do guessing games with them. Mm. So all of these, this one has a number on it. Um, so they'll have students match the school to the pelt. Um, and other facts will also in the back have tracks and scat that they'll match animals to. Um, as you can see, this table's already full. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't take out the pelts and, or the uh, tracks and the scat because this table is full. Yeah, yeah, that would be a lot of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, so that's what we do with these guys. Many thanks to Sarah Balance for showing us the 4-H Capital Skulls and Pelts lesson from the Natural Resources team. If this job sounds like fun to you, check out a link in the video description. 4-H Capital is hiring. I'd also like to thank Dr. Brooke Miller for arranging my visit to 4-H Capital, coordinating all of the interviews, and being an amazing host during my time in Austin. Thanks also to AJ Philo of Mostly Engineered for being my cameraman for all of my Austin videos this spring. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.